I was always kind of dreaming of this game since I've been a kid, you know, um, in, in a really real way. I didn't think, oh, I'll make that game. I just thought, wouldn't it be cool if there was a game where? And I think everyone has had that. I think I heard somebody saying it's like a pitch from a child, basically, which is like, you know, there'll be a universe and you can go everywhere and you can have a ship and you can shoot lasers and, you know, all that kind of thing. It's like the most childish idea for a game in the world. And it was really fueled by sci-fi as, as I had always experienced it, which was, was books, books that I'd grown up with, like actual science fiction. We always knew that we wanted to make No Man's Sky. We, at the time, that was called Project Skyscraper, because um, we wanted a big, ambitious name for it. But we always knew the type of game we wanted to make, and we'd known it before we even started. Hello Games, and we had talked about it at that point. And we knew that Joe Danger was going to be a stepping stone towards that. The Joe Danger series, which was like four games in the end, um, like two on console and two on mobile, they were like a complete labor of love, you know. Like, I love those games still. Uh, a lot of people did, and they were way more successful than we thought they would be or had any right to be because we were so terrible at everything apart from making games. It really kind of properly started a year and a half ago, it's not quite a year and a half ago, but like a year and five months or something. And that was when uh, four of us, slightly different four to, to the four that had founded the company, just found a small room within that large office and we actually just like literally locked the door and had a separate entrance and stuff like that and squirreled ourselves away. And we started working on a prototype for No Man's Sky. Um, and we actually didn't show the rest of the team because we just wanted almost the pressure and the isolation, almost like it was a, a startup within this small studio that had to prove themselves. Um, and so we worked for for a year actually on that that prototype which then turned into something much bigger which is what we first showed at the VGX's world premiere Christmas Eve I got like a, a text and then a call saying like the the office is starting to flood this this kind of space that we had done up ourselves and everything that was like you know, kind of quite personal to us, I guess, um, was pretty much kind of wiped out within a few hours, basically. And we were back on our feet in, in a really, in a really crappy, lo-fi way. You know, within a couple of weeks, actually, we were, we were set up and, and that was definitely like indie development in like a, a microcosm. It was like the highs of like, you've announced a game, people love it, you know. You've been flooded, you're destitute, everything's gone, it's wiped out. <laughs> Go bankrupt. Uh, so yeah, it, it was a crazy couple of months. But man, like the, my faith in the community, like games, the community in general, was completely restored at that point, you know. And times like this at E3, we've had so much positivity about the game. You know, like you just never see that, where, where people really get behind something in such a big way. And that's massively, massively meaningful to us and really fuel, fuels you. There is this thing that it's set in this infinite procedurally generated universe but that's actually not why we're making the game. We're not making some sort of tech demo or something like that. We, we had the idea of making a game that felt true to the, the kind of sci-fi books that we'd grown up with, the kind of idea of that, the fantasy of that. Uh, and we wanted to deliver on that, and to do that, we had to create the universe for you to explore, because that's the feeling that we wanted you to have for one of the first times in games to to actually land on a planet and for nobody to know what was on that planet. Not the creator of the game, 
and not anyone else because no one else has ever been there before. Give everyone a spaceship, start them all on a different planet. Give them a, a working, living, breathing universe that has planets with ecology, that has uh, space stations and fleets of freighters and uh, military and police and different races and, and all of them interacting and let players loose and let them decide the game that they want to play because that's what's interesting to me. I'm really interested by things that are less descriptive actually and less, you know, hard-coded about what way you have to play it and that don't start with a tutorial and then just kind of land you in and let you off to make your own fun. Having said that, it isn't just like some sort of empty blank canvas. You know, there is a lore to the universe and there are decisions that we make based on that. And it is, it has a personality. Um, it is generally a pretty dangerous place to be, as it should be kind of for sci-fi. It isn't just some ambient utopia, right? You are always in danger. Actually, everyone starts on a, on a different planet, but everyone starts on a different planet on the outside edge of the galaxy. And they all share that same galaxy. Um, and for most people, they will try and make the journey to the center of the galaxy. And there's a reason why you would want to do that. Um, but that is a journey that they will undertake. And to do that, they will need to upgrade their ship, upgrade their weapons, uh, upgrade their suit. Um, and they will need to plan and they will need to cooperate with other players to an extent um, and, and they will actually need to be quite clever. And there is a game beyond that and you can continue to play um, but for a lot of people that's the core journey that they will be on. They will think I started out with the smallest crappiest ship you could imagine and I got to a point where I could get to the centre of a galaxy and see what was there um, and we want that to be significant. Station.